much everyone for coming along today. My name's Louise Regan. I'm chair of the Palestine Solidarity Campaign. Uh, and I've traveled down from Nottingham this morning to join you here. And I'm very pleased to be at this All Kent rally. So thank you so much for coming out today. So welcome to all of you who have come to this Stop Arming Israel rally in Sandwich today. Just a, a little housekeeping, if people can make sure we stay inside the square and don't block any of the pathways, um, that would be really helpful so that people can get around behind us. And please do make sure you visit the stall where there are leaflets, but badges, flags and other items for sale. So this All Kent Rally is supported by Palestine solidarity organizations from across Kent, including South East Kent PSC, West Kent PSC, Medway PSC, Thanet PSC, Thanet for Palestine, Folkestone Folks Stands with Palestine, Left Folk, the University of Kent and Canterbury Christchurch Palestine Societies, Thanet Queers in Solidarity, Canterbury and Whitstable Stop the War, and others. So how amazing that you have so many organizations here standing in solidarity with the Palestinian people. And I know many of you will have been organising in your own communities in Maidstone, Canterbury, Margaret, Whitstable, Folkestone, Ramsgate and more with rallies, marches, kite flying, panels and lobbying your local MPs and councillors. So, why are we here in Sandwich? I did think that myself when I set off this morning, having never been to Sandwich. Um, but only a few hundred metres away from this square is Discovery Park. Discovery Park is a science and business park where more than 150 companies are based. But it's one particular company that this rally has been organized to draw your attention to. Instro Precision. Instro Precision is part of Israel's largest arms company, Albit. Albit makes 85% of the weapons and military drones being used in Israel's ongoing genocide against the Palestinian people. Instro makes targeting systems used on guns, tanks, planes and drones, which are right now being used to target men, women and children in Gaza. The weapons built here on your doorsteps have bombed civilian homes, hospitals, bakeries, ambulances and UN schools and shelters. These weapons, which Albert advertises as field-tested, are being used to commit war crimes. We are here to urge Discovery Park to stop profiting from civilian deaths and evict Instro Precision. And we are here to say to the people of Sandwich, if you are unhappy about working and living in close proximity to an arms factory, complicit in genocide and war crimes, please get involved and join us. Please visit the store and sign up for updates and leaflets on forthcoming actions by the groups represented here. And if you're not already a member of PSC, please take information about our work and consider becoming a member. Sadly, some of our speakers aren't able to join us today, but we have got messages of support we'll be reading out. We also have some uh, songs to play for you, and uh, we have people who will be performing some poetry. So it'll be an amazing event today talking about what we can do, what more we can do uh, to support the Palestinian people. So I'm going to hand over to our first speaker. Our, I hope she's here. Yeah. I hope she's here. <laughs> Look out, she's here. So our first speaker is Naomi Wimborn Idris. She is one of the co-founders of JBL. She's also, and I'm very proud to be a member of the same union, the National Education Union, as, as her. She's done fantastic work standing up for the Palestinian people for decades. So you're very welcome, Naomi. Over to you. Thank you, Louise. Thank you, Louise. Well, I cannot claim, as Louise did, that she's driven four hours from Nottingham to get here. I've driven from 40 minutes from Liminge, and that was very nice. It's a nice, nice trip. I've written down a few words for you today, and I want to start with some words from the Palestinian writer and diplomat, Rashid Khalidi. He spoke about one of the most powerful armies on the planet using its full might against a besieged area Whoops, windy. <laughs> One of the world's most heavily populated enclaves whose people had no way to escape the rain of fire and steel. He described 
deployment. <laughs> Thank you. He described deployment of bombs dropped from the air and artillery fire of such scale and ferocity, a retired American general called it absolutely disproportionate. The thing about those words is that they appear in a book that Khalidi has written called Hundred Years of War Against Palestine, and it was written before October the 7th. He was writing about 2014. This has been the Israeli way of dealing with Palestinians for a long, long time. Don't believe anyone who tells you... Don't believe anyone who tries to tell you that history began on October the 7th with the Hamas attacks on southern Israel. We're dealing with intentional disproportionality against civilians. These civilians, the Palestinian people, are routinely dehumanized, denied human rights, denied civil liberties, demonized by world leaders. Shame. Absolutely, shame. Why is this? Why is this? Is it because the Jewish people, my people, are somehow demonic themselves and have nothing better to do with their lives than destroy Palestinian society, communities, culture, etc.? No, it's not. This is what colonizers do, friends. White British colonizers in North America, Australia and New Zealand destroyed indigenous communities there, wiped them out. White German colonizers committed genocide against the Nama and Oberhariro people in 1904 to 1908 in what is now Namibia. White Belgian colonizers committed atrocities in Congo between 1885 and 1908. This is the way the world works, tragically. Zionist colonization was a British imperial project carried out by European Jews who had the illusion that carving out a state in Palestine would solve anti-Semitism, the anti-Semitism that Jews have faced for generations. That's why I'm here. My grandparents were driven out of Russia, Poland, Germany, uh, Ukraine at the end of the 19th century. But of course, that's not the answer, is it? Oppressing Palestinians now is not the answer to the oppression of Jews in the past. Jews opposed the first uh, enunciation of this project with the Balfour Declaration in 1914, 1917, sorry, and a growing number of Jews are opposing it now. I think we can see that the tide is turning. Oh, I just saw a fabulous dress. Look at the watermelon dress. Oh my God. Sorry, that stopped me in my tracks that did. Sorry about that. <laughs> the solution to anti-Semitism, to racism, to inequality and injustice is unity and solidarity. Turn my page. We're seeing fantastic campus protests, mass demonstrations where Jews, Muslims, Christians and people with no affiliation, etc., etc., meet together and make their feelings known. This is the way forward, friends. People I meet are starting to pick up on the reality, even though our media has done its best to toe the Israeli line and portray the narrative of Israel versus a terrorist Hamas, that every Palestinian is somehow guilty and worthy of being ethnically cleansed. Yeah. So our task is to carry on mobilizing like the students on campuses in US, UK, Europe. We have to demand an end to complicity. No more arms for Israel's war machine. No more university collaboration with Israeli apartheid. No more investment in companies that are complicit in Israeli apartheid. We have also to defend the freedom to speak and protest by all who want to end this historic injustice. We are all here because we care about peace, security and equality for all who live between the Jordan River and the Mediterranean Sea. So. Yeah. I think, is that the Margate contingent? Oh yeah, I thought it might be, right? <laughs> welcome, welcome. I want to conclude with a poem that Jeremy Corbyn, who some of you might have heard of, 
um, carries around in his jacket pocket and has done since December. I saw it at a rally we were both at last week in London. It's by the writer and professor Rifat al -Ariya. You've almost certainly heard it before, but it really bears repetition. Raf Rifat was killed in an airstrike by the Israeli military on December the 6th, along with his brother, his brother's son, his sister, and her three children. And the poem is called, remember, obviously written before his death, it is called, If I Must Die. If I must die, you must live to tell my story, to sell my things, to buy a piece of cloth and some strings. Make it white with a long tail so that a child somewhere in Gaza, while looking heaven in the eye, awaiting his dad who left in a blaze and bid no one farewell, not even to his flesh, not even to himself. Seize the kite, my kite you made, flying up above and thinks for a moment an angel is there, bringing back love. If I must die, let it bring hope. Let it be a tale. Thank you. Thank you so much, Naomi, for that. And I'm sure many of you have heard that poem. It always um, brings a tear to my eye when I hear that because I think it embodies what all of us have been witnessing over the past few months. Uh, just to follow, you know, Naomi read that poem beautifully and it talks about peace and love. And actually, for many of us, what we have experienced over the past few months is attacks on us. We've been called hate marches. Well, we know we're not hate marches. You're not a hate rally here. We are people out campaigning and fighting for peace, for justice for freedom for the Palestinian people, and we must not be silenced. We have to continue to be out, we have to continue to speak out and fight for freedom and justice for the Palestinian people, and continue to call for peace, because that is what they deserve. So thank you so much again, Naomi. Uh, we now have another poem, so uh, I'll go straight to our next poem. It's Nika, Mar Nika Marknich uh, is gonna read a poem for us, so thank you very much, welcome her. Hello, I'm Nika, I'm from Slovenia and I'm based in Ramsgate. I'm a researcher and a teacher and since September the 7th I found it sometimes difficult to teach about history and human rights. Um, so on, on Valentine's Day I went to Ramsgate to Screaming Alley uh, because there was an open mic on love and I wrote something called the rule of... What we're seeing in Gaza precisely is indiscriminate, widespread, annihilating violence. What we're seeing precisely is a genocide, a genocidal campaign against children. And what we see precisely is the role of this company in our neighborhood, in our county, in our backyard. It cannot stand and we will not stand it. There are long colonial dimensions to the violence that we're prote protesting against and drawing attention to today. So the British Empire has brought destabilization, oppression and disenfranchisement to so many countries around the world, including Ireland, where I'm from, uh, Sri Lanka and Palestine. We live on an island with a long history of exporting violence to other places, a long history of political sabotage and of drawing arbitrary borders on maps with horrendous consequences. Um, and of sending armies, weapons, mercenaries to enforce a shaping of the world in favor of empire. British politicians in the contemporary moment are living in delusions of imperial power and in a moral vacuum as far as I can see. We see that colonial history in what's happening today and instro precision is part of that history. We're here to demand that instro precision is ejected from Discovery Park we're here to say that their operation is untenable and that it is unacceptable. And I think it's interesting to reflect upon how enormous violence can be produced in very mundane places. So an industrial park in the southeastern corner of this country. Um, the weapons being produced in this quiet, mundane place go on to have lives that are unimaginable in this setting. 
Once they leave this place, they find their way into violent hands and they're used to inflict in horrendous violence upon, upon Palestinians and others around the world. We can no longer say that we don't know. And because of events like this, Fewer and fewer people can live in denial of the UK complicity and the corporate complicity in genocide. But I think it's really important to have a wider view of the resistance around the country and around the world as well. I think we're here as part of a wider movement of boycott, divestment and sanctions, a really powerful movement that I also feel is gaining traction and that there is a tipping point starting to come. Um, and I think that tipping point is part of this arc of justice that's moving toward the freedom of Palestinians, toward a global condemnation of the Zionist mindset that's driving this genocide. Activism works, and more and more activists are being created, more and more people are standing up for what's right and coming together to re resist the genocide, the complicity in genocide, and also to resist disengagement and denial. This activism, I think, creates an energy, it creates hope, and it links us with people all around the world. There's an absolutely incredible movement unfolding all around us from the university encampments to protest in the streets to the small conversations that can change somebody's mind. We're part of something bigger and part of something really significant, a shifting of common sense, not only in terms of the injustice and oppression and genocide in Palestine, but also a new awareness and rejection of our own complicities in this violence. It's a rejection of normalized violence, a rejection of the normalized production of weapons and a rejection of denial. So I spent some time yesterday at the University of Kent at the encampment that just set up there yesterday and it was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. There's hundreds of students there. <laughs> Hundreds of students and staff there in support as well. And they're part of this beautiful unfolding of resistance and hope and awareness around the world. They would love to see you. They would love some support. When I said that I was speaking at this event today, they asked specifically for me to invite you all to come to the University of Kent to see the students, bring them some snacks and sustain them. Um, and going there, it's just so inspiring. And I think it will really lift your spirits to see how young people are engaging with this. So just to finish, um, Angela Davis and Joy James talked about Palestine as a moral litmus for the test for the world, and that message is spreading. And by being here today, we're all contributing to freedom and justice. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. Oh, are you doing instro precision? Very nice. Uh, Natasha sent me a little quote specific to Instra, a little chant. So, inst Instro Precision, you can't hide. You are arming genocide. Oh, okay. What was yours? Shout yours. Very, very good. It's good. It's good. We have to keep chanting about these things. We have to keep raising awareness. And I do want to thank Rachel for raising the Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions campaign. That campaign was set up by Palestinian Civil Society. The Boycott National Committee has called out to all of us to do all that we can to support that campaign. So if you're not involved, if you're not sure about it, go onto the Boycott National Committee website, have a look and make sure that you are not um, participating in any organizations that they are asking us to boycott. And when you do boycott, if you see things in your supermarket and you're not gonna buy it, Oh, and there's a nice leaflet on the stall as well. Uh, and if you see something you, you don't think should be in your supermarket, go and talk to the manager, write to the company. We have to keep raising awareness. The more people that do that, the greater the impact that we will have. So, as I said, Rachel will be speaking in Margate next week on a panel discussion of events from the Nakba leading up to the occupation and siege in Gaza today. We know, that, as, been, as has been said, that these attacks did not start and were not caused by the events on the 7th of October. Next week, on the 15th of May, Palestinians around the world will be marking the 76th anniversary of the Nakba, or catastrophe, as uh, people refer to it, which, which refers to the ethnic cleansing of Palestine in 1948. On that date, with the founding of the State of Israel, hundreds of thousands of Palestinians were forcibly removed from their homes, 750,000 forcibly expelled from Palestine. 530 villages were destroyed and more than 15,000 Palestinians were killed. And 
The Nakba was not an event that just happened and finished. The Palestinians have suffered an ongoing Nakba since that time. They, are fa they, they live under occupation, they face continual oppression and dispossession, stealing of their land, arresting of their children in the middle of the night, and so we have to keep speaking out. What we are witnessing in Gaza today, though, eclipses this, both in the numbers of dead and the scale of destruction that we are seeing. And that's made possible by high-tech wep weapon systems being used by Albert and Instro, which is just down the road from here. And we have to keep remembering that, and we have to keep putting pressure for Instro to be out of, uh, out, out of our towns and cities. Instro proudly boasts of precision optical targeting systems. So with such high-tech equipment, there can be no excuses for the ambulances, schools, hospitals and playgrounds that Israeli occupation forces have bombed and the paramedics, journalists and children Israeli snipers have shot. And we have to remember that over 14,500 children have now been killed in Gaza. You know, this is not self-defense. Self-defense is not killing innocent children. So with this knowledge, we're sure that the other companies at Discovery Park will not, uh, would rather that the skills and resources that, that are being developed there were used to help people, not to kill people. So uh, we now have another poem. So Richard Cooper has a poem for us. So I'll invite Richard to come up. <laughs> Hi, uh, I think the first thing to be said about the Nakba though, it's not stopped and if you want to see how it's going on now, the BBC put on a documentary that you can see on the iPlayer called The Other War. It shows what's happening in the West Bank now uh, and, uh, and it's, hor it's horrifying. It's one of the most horrifying TV programs. Sorry? Can't hear me. Right, okay, here. Right, okay, right. So the, uh, the, I'm reading a poem by my late wife, uh, Rosemary McLeish, and she was, uh, uh, she was a lifelong pacifist, and she would have been horrified by the genocide in Gaza, and so I'm quite glad she doesn't have to uh, see it. Uh, but um, she wrote a poem about something slightly different, which is not about kind of what's happening to them, who are suffering, but to us, uh, and, and observing the damage that goes on has... Um, uh, affects our psychological state as well and damages us and we should never forget that and, uh, and that's another reason for keeping going with this. Uh, this it starts from the idea that she heard this line in Macbeth when she was uh, at school uh, her husband's to Aleppo gone master of the tiger so this is Aleppo I first heard the, the word Aleppo when reading Macbeth at school Shakespeare's unforgettable lines lodge like an earworm, a nursery rhyme in my brain. My imagination at 14 sat up and paid attention. Aleppo sounded mysterious, alluring, exotic, the tiger of gallant Elizabethan merchant ship. I imagine that Aleppo must be a port by the sea or a broad and busy river. No trees except the occasional palm. People speaking a babel of many tongues with dark hair and flowing robes, enjoying a soft sea breeze, not minding the smell of waste, vesturing in the sun, uh, eating dates, going about their business. Mysterious, even sinister to me. There would be strange religious buildings, uh, rich with pattern and color and chanting, far from our Dow drab churches, echoing with off-key hymns. Noisy cobbled public thoroughfares would lead to dark lanes and murky passageways, to old stone steps and refuse blown into corners. I imagine working donkeys being abused while wives beaten, children sent out to work while the men sat in coffees, cafes, smoking, drinking, uh, uh, playing, playing tably, kicking away the stray cats under the tables. Meanwhile, the unknown woman's husband was threading his way through the souks seeking by her sword at his side, his armed sailors guarding the tiger. Here were humans miraculous in their rawness and not hiding their basic cruelties, their intolerance and greed behind the bromides of our dead religion. We don't beat donkeys here, what would the neighbors say? By bleak Yorkshire moors, I was, was molded into the dreary character of Gerda in Hans Christian Andersen's Snow Queen, drooping about looking for a cold-hearted boy, teasing her pet, uh, uh, stealing Gerda's muff, passionate, tamed, untamed, uh, foreign. 
I never found out anything about Aleppo, never visited that part of the world, didn't know its history and how accurate a, position, a picture my imagination had painted. But I'm not engaged here with reality, facts, objective truths. I don't want my mind's picture ch changed by research, by dotting I's and crossing T's. Aleppo is a castle in the air, a thing of sugar and spice and all things strange. The reality I cannot avoid now seeing now of human savagery unleashed of the devastation of this ancient city, of the tide of lost, traumatized people fetching up on cruel scores, stock shores has affected me like a personal grief. What they have lost is unimaginable, but a precious part of me has died too. Uh, Macbeth's weird sister has carried out her promise and I'll do and I'll do and I'll do finds its echoes in the mind of a madman who wants to eradicate Aleppo from the earth. History, culture, citizens, souk, rubble, books, me myth, metaphor, hope, dust. Who would want Aleppo now? Thank you very much, Richard. Free, free! Palestine! Free, free! Palestine! From the river to the sea! to the river. And it's very good to see the Palestinian flag up there. Oh, it's just been moved. It was just up there on top of the church. But it was a very lovely sight to see it flying high. And it's great to have so many flags flying here. So keep waving your flags. Over the last seven months, more than 1.2 million displaced Palestinians have been forced to flee their homes. Many of them being displaced more than two or three times to flee Israel's relentless bombing. Today, Rafa, which usually has a population of 280,000, has 1.4 million people sheltering in dire conditions. Over 600,000 of those are children, living in tents with little or no sanitation, clean water or food. Aid trucks are lined up at the border, ready to deliver life-saving supplies but Israel is not allowing them to enter. The entire Gazan population of 2.3 million, million people is facing starvation and possible famine, according to UN agencies. Last week, Israel began attacking Rafah. The British government and others in the West have been happy to stand by while more than 14,000 children and 10,000 women have been murdered by Israeli forces over the last seven months. All the time they have said that a ground invasion of Rafa was the red line that Israel couldn't cross. Now that line has been crossed multiple times and the hypocrisy and disregard for Palestinian lives by our politicians has been exposed. Before we continue with our next speaker, we want to hold a minute of silence to remember all of those that have been killed in Gaza in this horrific genocide. But not only the over 35,000 women, children and men who have been killed in the past, four, past seven months, but those who have died in the last 76 years since the Nakba when Palestinians were violently forced from their homes. So please join me in taking a minute's silence to remember them. Thank you. We honour the dead, but we must continue to fight for the living. I want to pass on apologies from two speakers now. First, from Jessica Leshnikov, a Jewish activist and soprano singer from Kent. Some of you will have heard Jessica's wonderful voice singing prayers in Hebrew at other rallies. 
and talking about the challenges and isolation of speaking out against Israel's actions within Zionist communities. Jessica is taking time out to recharge after recent upsetting encounters with Zionists and promises to be back with us soon in the struggle against the media and the state support of Israel. Second, thank you. Secondly, Majada Sholi, a Palestinian artist and student, was going to share some of her recent performance piece, Rebellious Scars, here. Unfortunately, as a Palestinian student, Majada was worried that speaking out at this rally might affect her visa status. And she was right to be worried. On Thursday, another Palestinian student who has lost relatives in Gaza had her visa revoked after she spoke at a demonstration at the, Unister the University of Manchester. Shame. Dana Abukama, a final year law student, said the UK government revoked her visa on national security grounds after claiming she was a risk to public safety. This is just another example of how Palestinian and non-Zionist Jewish voices are being shut down in the press, on campus, and by our own governments. So let's send our solidarity from this rally both to Dana, Majada, and Jessica. Solidarity with them. And as we heard earlier, yesterday students at the University of Kent joined the global, global student solidarity movement by launching their own Gaza solidarity encampment. Solidarity with the students there, solidarity with the students at universities up and down the country who have set up encampments and are fighting for peace and justice for the Palestinian people. And these movements started over in the States and we've seen the horrific attacks on students who are just camping out to call for peace for the Palestinian people. Students around the world and in Kent are demanding that their university tuition fees are not used to support the genocide, Israeli apartheid or any form of oppression and are calling on their institutions to condemn Israel's genocidal regime divest from Israel's affiliated companies and pledge to help and fund the Palestinians. And we should all, as we heard earlier, do our best to get along and stand in solidarity with the students. Yes. Make sure you get down to the camp. I went to Leeds last weekend when I was there, went and saw the students there. Students at Nottingham set up a camp yesterday too, so when I get back to Nottingham, I'll be going down to stand in solidarity with them, take along snacks, Take your joy, take your support for them because that is what they need. So this rally sends its solidarity to the students in Canterbury and any money made from the collections to pay for today's rally will be donated to the students' solidarity camp in Canterbury. So please, Dig Deep, make sure you donate. The money will go to support the students in their encampment. So, have you all got... Oh, it's in my bag. Let me just find it. Very exciting now. Have you all got one of these leaflets? And if you haven't got one, you need to make sure you get one from the stall over there. And I'm going to explain why. This leaflet is about Instro Precision and Discovery Park. If you don't have one, as I say, pick one up from the stall and find out what you can do to put pressure on Discovery Park to evict Instro from the site. Activists from several of the groups here have been organising monthly pickets to give information to, workers, to other workers on the site to let them know who they are working next door to. Our job has to be to continue to educate the public about what is happening. Many people do not realise that this is happening in this town. Uh, we are sure they don't want Sandwich to be famous for having an arms factory complicit in genocide on their doorstep, doorstep. One of the things that you can do is to write to Discovery Park. And this week, a letter was sent on behalf of all the groups in Kent to the CEO of Discovery Park. And Diane from South, Kent, South East Kent PSC is going to read the letter out to you now. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Did everybody see those lights last night? I think that was a heavenly sign, a protest against Eurovision. Yeah. Before I read from the letter to Discovery Park, I want to tell you about the Lucas Plan. 
because it's highly relevant to what's going on here. In the 1970s, trade unionists facing redundancy, scientists, engineers, designers, produced a blueprint for transforming Lucas Aerospace, a company that produced combat aircraft and the Stingray missile system for NATO into one that produced socially useful products for the common good. In 1976, the Lucas Aerospace Combined Shop Stewards Committee produced an alternative corporate plan for Lucas Aerospace that allocated the production of socially useful products for the common good. We don't hear those words very often nowadays, do we? They asked the 18,000 strong workforce facing redundancy, if you didn't make weapons, what else could you make? Their ideas included drawings of wind turbines, energy efficient heat pumps, and hybrid power packs for cars, virtually unheard of in the 1970s. This is the innovative imagination and brilliance of working people. The Combined Shop Stewards Committee regarded it as scandalous that people could be dying for want of a kidney machine when those who could be producing them were facing redundancy. In Gaza, right now, people are dying for want of dialysis machines. The Lucas Combined Shop Stewards Committee included the development of heat pumps, as I've said, all of these amazing innovative technologies, which were so new back then in the 1970s, imagine that. Why aren't workers at Instro Precision producing scanners for the NHS instead of weapons components? To my mind, the reason is because we're not empowered to decide what's for the common good. We hardly even hear the phrase anymore. Free Palestine, free ourselves. Free Sudan, free Congo DRC, free Haiti, free Darfur. Dear Dr. Schreiber, we, the undersigned, implore you to end Discovery Park's relationship with Instro Precision in view of their flagrant complicity in plausible genocide, as defined by the International Court of Justice, and in view of your liability as a landlord to ensure that criminal activity is not carried out on your premises. Weapons manufactured by Instro are among those used in attacks that have resulted in the deaths of Palestinian civilians, including more than 14,000 children. Such actions not only violate international humanitarian law, but also go against the principles of morality and human decency. As a responsible corporate entity, as it is incumbent upon Discovery Park to uphold ethical standards and ensure that its tenants do not contribute to human rights abuses. By providing a platform for Instro Precision to operate within your premises, Discovery Park inadvertently becomes complicit in the harm caused by their products. Well, we were being nice there when we used the word inadvertently, but we didn't put it in the letter. As a responsible corporate entity, I've read that bit already, governments, corporations, companies and individuals complicit in an unfolding genocide and crimes against humanity 
are increasingly facing the likelihood of consequences for their inaction as referred to in recent press articles. It's a bit hard to turn the page when you're holding this other thing. Uh, right. Um, we quoted from a couple of articles that were in, believe it or not, the Financial Times and the Daily Telegraph. So the Daily Telegraph said this, quote, no politician wants to spend their twilight years in the dock at The Hague. So it is with some seriousness that David Cameron and Rishi Sunak will have read the 17-page legal letter sent to them on Monday evening by 600 of the nation's top lawyers. That was in the Daily Telegraph in April. And uh, there was a similar one in the Financial Times, but I won't bother reading that because it's just uh, repeating the same thing. We note your description of Discovery Park as, quote, an idyllic setting, unquote. And your list of activities carried out at the site includes pharmaceuticals, biotechnology, health care and technology. You have written of your pride in hosting companies at Discovery Park who promote women's health and femtech innovation. This does not sit well with your simultaneous hosting of Instro Precision, a company that manufactures instruments that are directly used to murder a massively disproportionate number of women and children among the civilians killed and who are being deliberately starved by the State of Israel. The prevention of births is among the specific definitions of genocide as defined by the United Nations Genocide Convention. Newborns are dying from blast injuries and women are giving birth to malnourished babies who cannot survive without sustenance being denied to them by the state whom your client serves. Instead of pleasant pastimes such as fishing or golf, the town of Sandwich is rapidly becoming known for harboring an arms manufacturer who is producing weapons and instruments being used to commit mass murder of the Palestinian people. We know from conversations that have been held with workers going into the company and from people who are other tenants of Discovery Park that they're unhappy to be sharing the site with a company producing for wep weapons for Israel. In the last month, Somerset Council voted to evict Elbert Systems from their Bristol property and Paxton, the landlords of the L3 Harris factory in Brighton, announced they would not renew their, their lease when it ends. We urge you to follow this stand. <laughs> By severing ties with Instro Precision, you will send a clear message that Discovery Park does not support or facilitate violence and oppression against the Palestinian people and it committed to human rights. Thank you for your attention to this urgent issue. We look forward to hearing from you regarding the steps that Discovery Park will take in response to this request. Yours truly, us. I'm going to suggest that we also send this letter to the Archbishop of Canterbury and Bishop Rose to ask them to sign it. We're going to do that. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Diane. What a brilliant letter. Free, free! Palestine! Free, free! Palestine!
the stroke precision, you can't hide. We can't do it, yes, hide. Fantastic. It is really easy for us to feel powerless in the face of the horrors that we are witnessing. But you do have power. Every action you take, no matter how small, can make a difference. Can raise the cause of Palestine and raise awareness to bring people into this struggle to call for an immediate and permanent ceasefire, but also for the long-term justice and freedom for the Palestinian people. We need to channel our rage, our hope, our humanity, whether it's wearing a badge in your workplace, wearing a beautiful watermelon dress as you walk around the streets, being here today, or marching with hundreds of thousands of people on the streets of London. Our united voices send a message to those in power. And next Saturday in London is the Nakba March, so please make sure you get along if you can. I know people from Margate are travelling together by train, so please get in touch with them. Go on, Margate. Last month was the 30th an anniversary of the ending of apartheid in South Africa, brought down by global solidarity. We know we can win when we take action. And we remember that Nelson Mandela said, we know all too well that our freedom is incomplete without the freedom of the Palestinians. I'm moving on to our last speaker now, but I am going to say to you, please don't disappear because at the end we would like to get everybody together to have a big photo. I've got a couple of further announcements and a couple of further apologies that I just want to give. So please don't disappear off, but our last speaker for this event is uh, Sharifa Energy. Sharifa is a performer, poet and activist and has been involved in actions at the Leicester Elbit factory for many months now. And I'm really pleased she's come along. I know she's been in a lot of pain this week with suspected crack ribs, but she's taken the time out and she's made the effort to get here and we really, really appreciate that. So welcome, Sharifa. It's great to have you here. <laughs> Hey everybody! So I don't have cracked ribs, they were useless at the doctors. I think it's just bruising, but um, I've gone for an x-ray so we'll find out. But yeah, thank you so much for inviting me to be here today. Um, and yeah, we're, I'm here from the Leicester Resistance out for the Elbit drone factory that we have that supplies the Israeli occupation. And it's really beautiful to see that people here in Kent are resisting the intros, the intro, um, factory as well which is of course connected to Elbit so I think definitely for us all to be connecting with each other and resisting from our local communities is really important and this week um, so we've been resisting since May 2021 um, since Pal Action went on the roof where um, activists got onto the roof in 2021 and they were there for six days and that's when Gaza was being bombed and we became familiar with the fact that this factory even existed on our doorstep. So yeah, that was a beautiful form of solidarity um, with Gaza prior to people catching on in the last eight months. You know, we've been resisting for a long time. Uh, our concern about the genocide in Gaza has been of concern for many, many years. And even now, um, so that's been happening and then the local community you know there were like families and stuff that were there regularly every week week in week out um, standing against this factory and then last year there was an encampment siege uh, organized by pal action outside the factory in may um and at the same time you know next week is nakba day 76 years since the ongoing genocide of palestinians across the land from the river to the sea so yeah people camped out outside the, the Elbit factory and then locals again continue to resist uh, weekly so we've been going since um, like it's been happening ongoing but since October like people have been there every week protesting outside the factory um, you know and, and this week on Wednesday Pal Action returned amazingly which they did do an, an action even in October they did manage to get a lorry into the factory gates but their most successful one to date since three years ago was they actually managed to get back onto the Elbit factory roof and they smashed up the Elbit roof! And as 
as a Leicester resident and as somebody, you know, you stand outside the gates and you think, what we do, what can we do to resist this? And at the same time, you know, the, the, the only criminals are Elbit. Yeah. Elbit are the criminals. Yeah. Intro are the criminals because state, you know, uh, breaking the roof like what is that in 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 reality in terms of what is actually happening and direct action has to happen because they don't listen to us peaceful protest doesn't work we have to escalate our demands and our methods of demand and at the same time you know like um otherwise feel things just feel like a parade P personally i feel like walking with palestinian flags w walking through central london just feels like a parade to me i'm like eight months into genocide we need to, our actions have to be disruptive yes. in order to yeah in order for our demands to be met uh, university encampments is beautiful to see that people of university students are catching on but they have to be disruptive it can't just be summer camps you know in the sunshine people just camping in the sunshine we need to ensure we're escalating for gaza as we're standing here you know rafa is being attacked the whole of gaza is being attacked and not just gaza different parts of the west bank as well um, I'm uh, very much in support of Janine Refugee Camp in the north of the West Bank. Um, part, uh, I facilitate workshops for the Freedom Theatre, which is based there. So I will read something out because um, a significant date for me from last year was actually July the 3rd. And it was a really stressful time where Janine had, had airstrikes and there was a large invasions. A lot of people weren't tuning in and um, it was quite lonely. But at the same time, I want to read this out because Again, this is another place where that is impacted by these drones, which is not only Gaza, so is Nabla, so is Taba, so is Tulkarim, and all these other places. So when we ask for Elbit to be out of our communities in its subsidies, we demand for them to be out of Janine skies, out of Nablus skies, out of Rafa skies, out of the whole of Palestine. <laughs> So this poem is called July and Janine, 2023. July opened its sweltering arms. Europe pulls out swimsuits from the back of wardrobes. Janine's been bombed, invaded with hundreds of Israeli soldiers on foot and missile attacked. Can't sleep from Leicester City, England. Worried about my friends, worried about my temporary neighbors, the elder Iraqi resembling uncle who'd greet me daily drinking gahwa on plastic chairs with his son outside his home. Ahlan wa sahlan, a gentle welcoming nod as I carried plastic water bottle packets in both arms from the camp supermarket. I recalled a generous older elder at the top of the street, insisting I took thick blankets his wife prepared as I looked for bed sheets past closing time. You're my neighbor now, bring them back whenever, don't worry. Can see the bedroom I slept in, more vivid than I'd seen in months, the disturbed, charcoal-etched figure on the wall, smudged with a fingertip, the thick pipe outside my window, already planned to slide down if the Israeli army broke down the door in the night, their sadistic rituals breaking into people's homes, invading the camp at least twice a week before Fajr prayer. The locals warned, be careful, stay away from the windows when the Jaish come. No time to dress, no warnings, in Jerusalem my father opened his front door, no questions, the Israeli army shot his son in the head. No trigger warnings for the children home who bear witness. Colonial Israeli settlers obsessed with extrajudicial killings, targeting children, justifying, dehumanizing, firing. 3rd July 2023, they bombed Janine camp, occupied and invaded for over 24 hours, bombed the cars in front of the Freedom Theater, D9 bulldozers, bulldozers bulldozed main roads, slicing into the gravel, uprooting Janine Camp's roads like allotment soil. Locals sweeping up the mess, jet washing the city streets, inspecting the damage, cameras clicking, elders displaced from Haifa, Yaffa, to Janine Refugee Camp in 1948, give interviews to their youth, explaining what they saw in summer 2023. Shell-shocked on their doorsteps, flashbacks of the Nakba, Flashbacks of the first and second intifada, flashbacks of every other night's invasion. Cars overturned, burnt on the sides of the street. Mothers walking with their belongings in bin bags, carried on top of their head. In 2023, in Janine refugee camp in the West Bank, no apologies, no reparations, no withdrawal of Israeli troops long term. 
the local youth belittled by Western media, grandmothers speak proudly of their youth, protecting their community. Who could interject and speak over Teta's blessings? Young men carrying their grandfathers on their back, leaving the clamp, displacement, faces flash in front of me. How is me to? My favorite cheeky tiny girl who'd side eye me to smuggle her copy juice from the theater fridge. Ashraba seed, Ashraba seed. Our private joke greeting when we'd catch each other's eye. How is Leif? How is Hamoudi, the little boy who ran out his house brimming with pride to show me his Ibrahim Nabulti amulet? The locals I'd broke bread with, the youth I'd see picking salad at the falafel stand. How's the long eyelash joyful little girl on the top of the street who'd always invite me for coffee and tea? Where are you going? Nablus? Go eat Nablus Kunafa, Zaki Kathir. The hilarious dad who told me of all the years he spent in Israeli jails, they couldn't break him. A generation of young men two decades ago, mass arrested, administered detention without trial, took the youth off the street. The occupier fears the Shabab's fire. Their resilience, their resistance, their defiance. How's the aroused grandfather? How's allows family I'd sit with at the top of the mountain for hours, translating Arabic to English back and forth using Sheikh Google? My 15 year old friend from the camp messages, I need psychological support. My brain couldn't take the bombs. Mahmoud stepped outside and lit his cigarette. A missile exploded. He went flying across the streets, his ears ringing. Alhamdulillah, he is still alive. The Freedom Theatres recently lost too many. Freedom Theatre family shot dead on their way to school or when forming the army. Mahmoud Al Saadi, Sadil Nagnaya, the local teenage boys murdered. I wish I could etch their names in everyone's memory, just how they remember Shireen Abu Akleh murdered in their camp. Can't walk one metre without seeing the faces of martyrs or those in administrative detention without trial in Israeli prisons on posters. Palestinians continue to fight for the dead and for the living, tweeting like maniacs into the echo chamber, amplifying our friends' voices. No help arrives, trying to find ways to be useful, would have swept up the courtyard, How's Tabasi's precious olive tree in the theater porch? The children with no local park, loved putting their hands in its soil. No playground for a community of 17,000. How's Suzanne? It's been over 30 hours, pacing whilst the Israeli army have occupied her home. Seen hours later as they came out their home on Eye of Palestine. Channel 4 News patronizes Tabasi. Hours after surviving the horrific Janine invasion, almost lost his family and neighbors, had fled to Janine City. Do you encourage Palestinians to denounce violence? Survivors of systematic violence, daily invasions, funeral guests of the children murdered next door, had only days ago held a distraught child to his chest who buried his only sister to deal. 15 year old shot in the head by Israeli soldiers when filming from her backyard. Water tank shot at, destroyed, pipes burst, electricity cut out, sewage attacked, another community I love in a state of emergency. Janine's youth and children had never witnessed this before. The second intifada 20 years ago in nappies or unconceived. Respite a luxury, can't access the sea though Haifa's a half hour drive away. The checkpoint looms, an Israeli soldier's gun points at West Bank residents' heads. No recovery, no respite, endless fight or flight, no pause for the nervous system. Men in Janine deny their post-traumatic stress disorder. Babies' eardrums adjust to hearing gunshots ricochet soon as they exit their mother's womb. The occupation's bullets and the local lions protecting the camp. Everyone waits for announcements from the minarets of the new Shaheed. The new martyrs in the camp when the occupation invades. Announcements echo from the masjid when Gaza's been bombed. Welcome to Janine camp, Mukayam Janine. My little bro Jamal asks as we speed back to the heart of the camp when word on the road is the occupation tanks are approaching. It's unfair I'm born in Janine refugee camp. Why can't I live like everyone else where I hear just music and not the music of gunshots every day? And I mention this because the PTSD across for Palestinians in the diaspora the, PT the PTSD for Palestinians in place that Janine camp, which is known as Little Gaza, they fear they are next. They have been had airstrikes and people murdered as well in their camp. You know, children, I don't know if people saw, but Adam Al Ghul, 
who was shot dead, a little boy who was just outside, him and his friends. And this is an ongoing reality in Janine and also um, as part of from the Freedom Theatre, two pe few people that I mentioned in here. Um, so in December, when the Israeli occupation carried out mass arrests, um, Tabasi was arrested, he was released the next day. Jamal, who I mentioned at the end, they, they took him for eight days um, into a jail and they tortured him every single hour. He's only like in his early 20s. Um, and uh, Mustafa Shatta, who is the general director of the Freedom Theatre, He's our friend and he's currently still in Israeli jail since December and they just keep you under adverse detention without trial. So please remember Palestinian prisoners at the same time the co-founder of the Freedom Theatre, Zakaria Zabedi, is still in Israeli jail and he was actually one of the six men who broke out of the Israeli Dilboa prison in, on the 6th of September 2021 and we celebrate them. We celebrate their victory. We celebrate when Pal Action managed to get into factories with high security in Britain. And we celebrate us for continuing to resist. It's, it's really important and it's really, really important that we apply pressure on these factories that exist on our doorstep. So thank you so much for everything that you're doing and it's really beautiful just to, for us to connect. And yeah, I've got pop copies of my poetry collection if anyone wants to get one, they're 10 pounds. And yeah, money's going back into the community anyway, you know? I've got a card reader and stuff, but yeah, just keep in touch. And yeah, keep doing what you're doing. Free, free! Palestine. Free, free! Palestine. Shut Elbit down! 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 Thank you. so much thank you so much for coming and uh, thank you for get, for managing to get here um, I know it was tricky for you and what a brilliant uh, final speaker for us now as I said we do want to take a photo I've got a few announcements so I'm just going to whip through those I've got a couple of apologies that I just want to cover so Shabir Laka who was an officer from the stop the war was due to speak today uh, he was he actually set up the Palestine so Society at the University of Canterbury when he was a student there uh, But unfortunately he is unwell, so I really hope he is feeling better soon And you have probably noticed that Mick Righteous is also unable to be with us And I know he would have been here if he could he's been working tirelessly attending rallies across the country and organizing fundraising events so when we finish the rally um, and have had the photo, we will end with one of his tracks for Palestine, Ceasefire Now. I want to give a huge thank you to the organizers, Natasha, Diane, and all the, the groups here that have organized this event. It's really important that we carry on doing this. And a huge thank you to all of our speakers and to those that couldn't make it and sent us wonderful messages. The next, as I said, the next national march is next Saturday on the 18th of May to mark the 76th anniversary of the Nakba. So please do get along to that if you can. They are wonderful marches with families, faith groups, young, young and old marching together. And as I said earlier, marches for peace. However, we know that not everyone can afford the tickets or has the time, but there are lots of other ways you can get involved. And I'm just going to list a few events coming up for you. So next week on the 16th of May, there's a meeting in Whit Whitstable to establish a Canterbury and Whitstable Stop the War group. On the same day in Margate, Thanet Queers in Solidarity and Thanet PSC have a panel to com commemorate the Nakbar. On Wednesday the 22nd of May, Deal for Peace have a film night showing Gaza Mon Amour. Uh, all proceeds go to MSF. It's at the Landmark Centre. You can buy tickets on their website, Deal Film Club, and uh, tickets are £16, which includes food and drink. Please, when you go away from here, make sure you take away some of the Evict Instro leaflets. So many people here are not aware there is an Israeli arms factory right on their doorstep. Sign the letter, speak to the people you know who work at Discovery Park or live close by, and let's do everything that we can to get Instro out of Discovery Park and all the other factories in Kent and across the country that are arming a genocide. We need to have them shut down for good. Stay strong and keep fighting until there is a permanent ceasefire. But beyond that, we have to continue to speak out and to fight for long-term peace and justice for the Palestinian people. So please keep doing everything that you do. And thank you so much for coming along today. So we're going to have some of our beautiful banners here. We're going to group there. So 
all of you that are stood there are in a very good position. But if people could come and get some of these lovely banners, and then we'll do a big photo shot here, and then we'll play the song. And don't forget to visit the stall over there. I'm sure they'll have information about anything else you need. Woo! <laughs> 
Brilliant. Excellent. 